Do you want different ways to practice jazz standards that develop all of the fundamental skills you need to truly improvise? Of course, we start by memorizing small sections of music that we could call vocabulary. But as we begin to internalize these elements, we truly develop our ear and finger coordination, as well as giving ourselves the best chance of hearing something meaningful to play. So I'm going to share with you the different ways I have learned from my own experiences as well as studying the methods of some of the great jazz education teachers including Bobby Shu and Al Galper. Hi guys, welcome to this lesson on autumn leaves practice. Okay, and we're looking at the major section, pretty much the first four bars. The next lesson will focus on how I approach the minor section. Okay, so the first four bars you can clearly see are just like what you might see if you were in a big band or on a typical lead sheet, just the changes. So I'm going to give you some ideas of what I've done to help develop my own ear finger coordination. So if we look at number one. So number one, as you can see, is just starting on the root and going up first, the third, the fifth, and the seventh for each chord. And of course, this is the first four bars of Autumn Leaves, which is chord two, chord five, chord one, and chord four, what I would call the major section part of Autumn Leaves. Now, don't just practice number one as I've written it down. I mean, I could have written a hundred exercises for this, but what I really suggest you do is practice going up and down the changes in a linear fashion. Maybe start on the third, maybe start on the fifth, maybe start on the seventh and then come down and go up. OK, you don't always have to start from the bottom. You could go the other way. And exactly the same with number two, but we are using eighth notes or as we in the UK say, quavers. <laughs> So number three, we are starting on the third and including the ninth. The ninth can be a, a beautiful sounding note and it shouldn't ever be overlooked. Okay, especially starting on the ninth. I just strongly suggest that you experiment. Experiment yourself. Maybe start on the ninth and come down and just have fun. Okay, there's no pressure. You're just trying to work out what sounds good to you. To you. Okay, because depending on who you listen to and who you want to emulate, who you want to sound like yourself, that will take you forward in your own plane, identifying little sections of their vocabulary. What are they doing? What notes are they including? You've got to get quite good at the analytical side, analysis of their solos, work out what they're doing and get that into your practice. I'm going to talk a bit, a little bit more about that later in this video. Okay, as you can see, here we go, number four, we are looking at the guide tones where we're going from the third to the seventh, from the third to the seventh. This is pretty much the nuts and bolts of the harmony, the third to the seventh, that really dictates that line, okay, and the strong melodic possibilities. So I advocate practicing this just going that maybe just do the seventh maybe just do the third if it was me I would only practice the third so you know if you wanted to start off easier just do the the F go into the B go into the E go into the A <clears throat> if you're a little bit more advanced add that seventh as well Now, number five, what we're doing here is just practicing the forward motion. As I mentioned at the beginning, Hal Galper has written a fantastic book. I've, I've studied with Hal. I've had some online lessons with Hal. Uh, fantastic teacher. And this forward motion um, book that he wrote and this method that he teaches is absolutely fantastic for really opening up your ears and, of course, developing that ear finger coordination because you're always trying to hear where you're going okay you're targeting the next note and trying to develop that ability to hear where you're going 
And of course, exercise four will really help you with that. So as you can see in exercise five, I've started on the fifth and then I'm sorry, I've started on the third and then I'm targeting the seventh. And then that goes to the third, to the seventh and the third, seventh, etc. That's what you can see that we've done there. So you could practice that just with one eighth note, with two eighth notes. And as I've done here with three eighth notes. <laughs> Okay, number six, I'm using chromatic enclosures. Chromatic enclosures, great piece of vocabulary, which I've got the idea really from. Uh, although many players use it, I've, I've got the idea myself from Clifford Brown, the great Clifford Brown. Uh, get, gives your playing a real bebop type flavor. So number seven. <laughs> Again, we're just following from the third of the D minor seven down to the third of the G seven, from the third of the C major seven down to the third of the F major seven. So explore the melodic possibilities. Okay, and if you can play off the third, not all the time, but you know, you need something to start with. It can be a great, I found it to be a great springboard for creativity. Okay, number eight, I don't talk about scales and modes too much, but really, for my personal use, when I've looked at uh, my favourite players, they don't use a huge amount of scales, but it's very good just for helping you with exercises like number five, where you are targeting different notes of the chord. You know, I, I have heard teachers talk about these different modes, Dorian mode, Mixolydian mode, but all I, the way I think about it, if it's a D minor seven, I think it's C major starting on the second. If it's the dominant scale or the Mixolydian or the bebop scale, I just think it's C major starting on the G. And the same for the F major seven, when you're playing over autumn leaves, all of a sudden it doesn't change key to F major, but so you would keep the B natural. Number nine, we've discussed this before. If you've watched some of my videos, this is the fat slick or the broken chord on beat one and beat two. With in beat three and beat four, we are targeting the third again using a chromatic enclosure. Okay, and this is a fantastic little piece of vocabulary. You could play off the fifth, you could play off the seventh also. It doesn't work if you play off the root. Okay, number 10, we are now getting into some jazz phrases or licks. But all it is, is the vocabulary that we pretty much used already. So here you can see there's some scale fragments. We've got a type of chromatic enclosure on the G7. We've got the, the fat slick there, but we're using the flat nine. And then we've got two chromatic enclosures and again, and some scale fragments. But again, targeting the chord notes, always targeting the chord notes. Number 11. <laughs> Starting on the ninth of the D minor seven. And we've playing, this is almost like a Clark Terry type phrase. Okay, something that I've heard Clark play. Um, or I can certainly hear it in my head that he's playing. Okay, and it's like a motif. Okay, that helps draw our listeners in if we can implement that motif type playing. But really, we're just focusing on the ninth down to the third, the ninth down to the third. Okay, number 12. Again, a big Clark Terry type phrase that. Um, again, on the G7, the third up to the flat nine, chromatic enclosure to the third of C major. And then again, a big Clark Terry type phrase is the use of those triplets. <laughs> 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 
and, and again, sticking pretty much to the chord tones. <laughs> Now, number 13, I've taken inspiration, still using the elements of vocabulary that I've talked about in previous lessons and earlier in this lesson, but adding a little bit of rhythm. And this is a, a Chet Baker type phrase. Um, and we've got a good scale run here, but again, starting on the fifth, coming down to the ninth and closing the tonic and then enclosing the root. Number 14, just a typical phrase using scale fragments again targeting different chord notes up to the ninth chromatic enclosure to the third chromatic type phrase to the fifth chromatic enclosure chromatic enclosure and then what i call that tom harrell type do -ba -do -ba -do 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 -ba exercise again all of these can be practiced on their own remember as well and then number 15 just a typical da -da 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 -da, down the scale bebop scale again or c major scale starting on the fifth whatever we want to call it mixolydian i definitely don't call it mixolydian if anything i call it the bebop scale and then we're incorporating to keep us on a chordal note we've got to put in that chromatic note, that chromatic passing note between the tonic and the seventh. And then we've just got some simple two note enclosures, again, enclosing chordal notes. So these resources come in B flat, they come in E flat, they come in concert pitch, and they also come in bass clef, if you're interested in them. But you'll also get these two great sounding jazz etudes. Let's have a listen to etude number one. And here we go with etude number two. So remember by subscribing to the Jazz Etudes newsletter, I, at, at the moment I've got six items that I'm giving away, like six emails over the first six days, but I'm always gonna be adding to that. I'm planning on maybe getting up to 20, where I'm just giving away lots and lots of resources to help you. Um, and then 
<clears throat> once you realize that I can help you, maybe you'll be interested in these types of lessons. Okay, so the link is in the description for the Jazz Etudes newsletter. I'm also putting a link in the description for the resources for this lesson. So if you want to get these resources for the price of a cup of coffee, they are available in concert pitch, B flat pitch, E flat pitch, and bass clef. You also get two different tempo backing tracks, 135 BPM, which is what I've just used, and you also get 110 BPM, slightly slower. You also get all of the audio tracks for each of the demos included as well as all the PDF resources and the two jazz etudes that you heard again in B flat E flat concert and bass clef okay guys hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one where we, we will be looking at the minor section how can we get around the minor section what can we practice to get around that minor two five and that chromatic descending sequence. Okay, bye for now.